Good afternoon from Kennedy Space Center as we're here on another lovely day. Lovely day so far, we'll see how the weather holds up. But we're here at Kennedy Space Center to check out all the cool and exciting stuff that they've got here. I love space travel, so this is gonna be awesome. Can't wait to show you some of the stuff that they've got around here. Some new and exciting things. I know they have a new exhibit, maybe checking that out. And then uh, we'll take the bus around and see what kind of things they have going on in the restricted area. So let's go check it out. And here we have the countdown clock here at Kennedy Space Center. It greets you right when you first walk in. It is actually, believe it or not, considered one of the most viewed timekeepers in the world, second only to London's Big Ben. It was built back in 1969 and it actually counted down for all the Apollo missions and the space shuttle program. Uh, it's retired now. They actually have a different form of counting down, but it still works for modern day rocket launches and when they open up Kennedy Space Center every day it counts down to the moment it opens up, which is pretty cool. And see, there it is, right there. The exact one on display since 2014. I'm super excited. I have always loved Kennedy Space Center. I come here about twice a year, but it is always a blast every time I come here. Always something new and exciting. So something new that I didn't notice the last time I was here, it was probably here and I just didn't see it because I was so excited, but you'll see that they got solar panels here. It says FPL solar now and then a little plaque that talks about how this is an example of something that they do here where they collect solar energy and deliver it back to the grid it's pretty neat so something that they've got here is these new panels that you step on and it creates power looks like it's a collaboration between georgia tech just keep on generating power this is the 10 million steps wonder what that equates into power all right, let's go explore Kennedy Space Center. There's a long line though. I guess summer camp just started. And here we are at the Rocket Garden. It's pretty neat. And then that's the new Heroes and Legends building that just opened up, sponsored by Boeing. It's like a 3D experience or IMAX experience. So this is an actual Saturn 1B rocket and it's the only one of its kind left and it was actually readied as a backup rescue vehicle for the Skylab 4 mission the Apollo and Suez test product as well it's pretty neat it's incredibly huge there's the Saturn 1B rocket that we just saw it's in the very back of the rocket garden and you've got all these rockets just lying around it's pretty cool though. It definitely makes a statement when you first walk into the entrance is right over there so you see it right when you walk in. I think the next place we're gonna go is right down that way because you got Atlantis right over there. That's a really neat building as well with some neat exhibits. So you got right here all the different countries that helped fund and operate and construct the International Space Station. It's pretty neat. So what we have here is a full-scale model of the Orion spacecraft on display. It's presented by Lockheed. It's a lot bigger when you see it up close. Just can't imagine being inside that thing. Oof. And there's the heat shield for re-entry. And here we are at the Atlantis Museum. It looks like they're doing some rehabbing of the uh, exterior. But this is not the actual Atlantis. Actually, this is not even the space shuttle. It's actually a replica of the rocket. But we're gonna go inside and check out the real Space Shuttle Atlantis, which is on display in here. It's always so moving to see the shuttle after that video. Very cool. So cool. You don't realize the sheer scale of this until you actually see it up close. I mean, I grew up watching these things take off and come back. It's pretty incredible. Gets me every time. Look at the detail of every little line. It's absolutely crazy. It's like a maze. But everything has a purpose. Let's go check out the exhaust side back over here. If you ever wondered what the exhaust looks like of a rocket engine, this is it. It's huge. So to kind of put it in perspective how extreme temperatures are, 
that they use for these rockets. Liquid fuel is actually far colder, almost four times as cold as the coldest recorded temperature on Earth. And the inside of the engine is over 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 1,400 degrees more than the boiling point of copper. Pretty incredible. So a space geek fact, the flames produced by the engines were barely visible to the naked eye. The pale blue flames could be seen as small cones just below the nozzles. That's pretty cool. Oh, I can sit in the pilot seat. Check this out. Oh, oh yeah, this is it right there. It's like a video game. Yeah, I think I would get kind of tired of being in here in close quarters after a while. It's pretty cool though. All the different switches. It's pretty neat. So back at the Atlantis space shuttle, notice this was pretty cool. It was talking about these bay doors. Uh, what I notice here on this space geek fact says that the payload doors were an important part of the structure, but on Earth they were so weak that they couldn't support their own weight. So if you ever wondered how they steered the shuttle, they actually used something called an RCS, which stands for Reaction Control System. And what that did is that controlled the speed and the direction of the shuttle and allowed it to steer in the direction they wanted to. And guess what? Another space geek fact! Unlike the gas in your car, the fuel used by the RCS jets didn't need an ignition source to work. Instead, it used two chemicals that ignite on contact with each other, and it made it safer and more reliable. So we've got a replica of the actual Hubble telescope, which is pretty cool. Something I didn't know is that a program created for Hubble to compare and match star configurations was used to create a pattern matching database to identify whale sharks by their unique spots. The system has tracked other endangered animals. Very, very neat. Did not know that. So another space geek fact. Hubble's incredible clarity doesn't actually come from its mirror. It's actually smaller than ground-based telescopes, but Hubble is able to take such clear pictures far away objects because its orbit is high above the atmosphere which can distort the image. So just because it's outside of the atmosphere gives it a clearer picture. I was reading something about the Hubble telescope and how clear the images are from afar. It says that if your eyesight would match what Hubble can do, you'd be able to see the fine print on newspaper all the way in New York City or the left and right turn lights on a car in California. That's how incredibly detailed this satellite is. Rocket man, burning up his fuse up here alone. Time for another space geek fact. Even though the Canadarm was a powerful tool in space, on Earth it couldn't even support its own weight. So what I want to know is how on Earth did this thing fly to space when none of its parts could support itself? That's crazy. All right, down the slide we go. Down this one right here. Ready? <laughs> now we're on the underbelly of the Atlantis. You can see all those silica foam tiles. Those were the heat absorbing tiles. And if one was damaged, it compromised the entire shuttle. So if there was ever any issues, they had to manually inspect every single one of these tiles on spacewalks. So in case you ever wondered how astronauts would go to the bathroom, they would have to strap into the toilet, which would be right here. And uh, I guess they have to use a camera. I don't know what that's all about. And they part ways, just like toothpaste from a toothpaste container. And then they might have to do a little dance. And then air sucks the stuff. And then they clean it up. That's disgusting. So this is an astronaut's bed while in space. It looks like a little cocoon looking thing. They zip themselves up. And they might have a book floating around. And they got their Dell laptop from the 90s. Pretty comfy, it almost looks like a, one of those padded rooms. So here's some space grub of what they had to eat when they were in space. Tortillas are apparently very popular because they're easy to store and they don't fall apart. 
and they show you like in a little burrito up at the top. And then time for another space geek fact. Traditional salt and pepper would be useless in microgravity. Well, that kind of makes sense. It kind of go everywhere. So astronauts had to use liquid salt and pepper instead. I don't know about that. And right here on the wall, they have all the different shuttles that made up the fleet. You have the Enterprise, which is currently in New York City at the Air and Space Museum there. And then the Columbia and the Challenger were lost. This one was lost on re-entry, and this one was lost during takeoff. And you have the Discovery. The Discovery is the one that's located in the Smithsonian in Northern Virginia. And the Atlantis, which is located here. We just saw that. It's right over there. And then you've got the Endeavor, which was the youngest of the fleet, but completed 25 missions, and it's located in the California Science Center in LA. I remember watching a video of this on the back of a big jet flying over Disneyland when they actually were taking it to its final resting home in LA. It's pretty cool. So that was a nice trip to see Atlantis. Still as beautiful as it was before. Now we're gonna take the bus tour into the restricted areas. Maybe we'll get a close look at the SpaceX facility. Maybe? I know that they're gonna be launching a Falcon Heavy soon. Maybe they'll take us past the SpaceX facility. It's possible. I know sometimes they go around it. Uh, but I know that they've got the Falcon Heavy launch in about two weeks. Uh, it should be static firing testing soon. So maybe it'll be out there. Let's check it out. The construction of the VAB required 65,000 cubic yards of concrete, 45,000 steel beams, 1 million steel bolts, amounting to almost 100,000 tons of steel. Notice the flag painted on the outside of the VAB? It's the size of a 21-story building. The blue section alone is the size of an NBA basketball court. Each star is six feet across, and each red and white stripe is wide enough for this bus to drive down. NASA is known for dreaming big, and big dreams require big equipment. I'm standing next to the Crawler Transporter, the largest self-powered land vehicle in the world, weighing in at six million pounds and capable of lifting and hauling 18 million pounds. The Crawler is an engineering marvel, even without a rocket sitting on top of it. This thing has 2,750 horsepower V16 diesel engines that can carry the crawler up to a top speed of, wait for it, one mile per hour. With that new mobile launcher platform, all 10 million pounds of it as it sits here, it is now waiting for the new spacecraft to make with it. And when that happens, the crawler will slide or roll underneath all of that, lift all of it, and remove all of that from that area onto this gravel pathway. And there the is the SpaceX facility. Just behind me, our launch pad's 39A. This is a historic launch pad 39A. That's where the Falcon Heavy will be launching off in like two weeks. And to conduct scientific experiments. They build it in the hangar and they roll it out to the launch pad. We're looking out at launch pad 39A, where every man who walked on the moon began their journey. 82 space shuttle missions also launched from right here. Space shuttle program ended in 2011. This launch pad has been transformed to accommodate a private space organization. Can you guess? SpaceX, the venture started by tech entrepreneur Elon Musk in 2002, signed a 20-year lease for the use of Pad 39A. <laughs> you may have watched their Falcon Heavy test flight, the one that sent a Tesla Roadster into space. This is where it launched. The Falcon Heavy rocket is currently the most powerful operational rocket in the world by a factor of two. SpaceX made history in 2012 when it delivered their Dragon spacecraft into orbit to rendezvous with the International Space Station, making SpaceX the first commercial company ever to visit the space station. You can see that same Dragon capsule back at the visitor complex in the NASA Now exhibit. So now we just got off the buses, they drop you off here at the Apollo Center and then we're gonna go in and check out one of these movies for the Apollo rocket that we're about to see. This is not a mock-up. These are the very consoles we sat at when men first took off to fly to the moon. It was a few days before Christmas, 1968, when Apollo 8 sat on the pad. She had been fully fueled throughout the night. 
The liquid oxygen in her tanks caused ice to form on the outside of the craft. The extreme temperature differences between the air and the sub-zero fuel caused the metal skin of the rocket to expand and contract. Everyone was on the pad of grief. It was as though the rocket was alive, breathing, straining at the leash. If a maneuvering thruster failed, if communications broke down, if navigation was off by one degree, if any piece of the miles of wiring, circuits, relays, or valves was defective, Frank Borman, Jim Lovell, and Bill Anders would pay with their lives. You are now in the final minutes before the launch of Apollo 8. Right here, where it actually happened. Spacecraft. 20 seconds, all aspects. We are still in the road at this time. Two minutes, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10. first stage here and then you can see further down it says second stage and then third stage at the very end gives you an idea of how large this rocket was so this is neat this is a new exhibit I don't remember this the last time we were here but it's about the uh, Fisher Space Pen Company evidently when I was reading up on it uh, the Fisher Space Pen Company was founded by Paul Fisher and he basically made the first retractable pressurized all-metal pen called the anti-gravity 7 and it was the only one that could work upside down underwater and in zero gravity and it's still used to this day which is pretty incredible to think it's one of those things you don't really think about in space but yeah you've got to be able to write notes and calculations a balloon and it's got very little pressure you can indent it very easily but as you increase the pressure more and more and more and about ready to burst you can't hardly indent it well, that's the principle here, because you have seven million pounds wanting to push this thing off the ground, and you've got six million pounds wanting to stay there. So without the pressure in the tanks, it would collapse like an accordion. It's the pressure in the tank that helps it carry the load from the front end to the back end. Well, that was really cool. That was actually Jim Stone. He was a uh, propulsion engineer for Northup uh, back in the day and worked on stage two, that part right there. It's pretty neat. Here you've got an actual Apollo 14 capsule, which is pretty cool. So something that I was told by that propulsion engineer is that all these stages, the first, second, and third stages of this rocket was designed and constructed so that this little capsule would be able to reach space. So all that up here and all that's what came back it's incredible we're back at uh the main kennedy space center complex and something that i noticed after getting off the bus is that they updated the video loop which i think is really cool because it was a little getting a little outdated so they updated the video loop that's got more current um launches with the uh, sls rocket ula boeing starliner and the spacex rockets falcon heavy and whatnot uh, pretty cool. I know that the previous video was more just kind of like a what's to come and now that we've seen a few launches uh, they've incorporated those live shots into the actual video. It's pretty cool. Check it out. So now we're going to check out some of the capsules. This would be NASA's Orion spacecraft developed by Lockheed Martin. And then you've got the Boeing Starliner CST-100. Take a little stairs and check out what it looks like inside. It's pretty cool. And then you've got the SpaceX Dragon capsule, which was actually one that was flown and came back. You can see because the heat burns at the bottom. And 
these are their side thrusters that kind of orient the spacecraft the right angle they want. And it looks like this is where the parachute deploys from the back side of it as it comes down to a land at the ocean. They got an astronaut here. How cool is that? It's a pretty cool shot. <laughs> Maybe these are real Mars rocks. Or probably not. And they have a Mars exploration rover made out of Legos. How neat is that? And let's go check out the shop because we love our merch. They seem to have this every single time I come here and I really like this. So for $25 you can get the shirt, which is right there, and the hat combo. And I like that color hat. It's not a bad price for $25. My last shirt that I got shrunk, so I'm in the market for a new one. All these fun socks. I can get an Apollo 11 moon boot sock for $15, or I can get the rocket, or I can get these astronauts high-fiving, some crazy equations, and then of course you got the NASA's. Actually, I like that shirt a lot. Kennedy Space Center says NASA for 18 bucks. Then you got the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11, the first lunar landing, $22. It's a women's shirt. Jen would really like that. I really like this shirt. I keep coming back to it, so I think this will be my replacement. Let's see, is it? And it's 50% cotton. All right, so it won't shrink too much. I might have to get that for 18 bucks. Can't go wrong. All the SpaceX merchandise pushed up to the front. That's kind of fun. Oh, this is the patch for the Crew Dragon. And then you got the Falcon Heavy patch. That's kind of fun. That's really neat. 16 bucks. All the cool magnets that they have. I like this. This is that crawler that we saw. It's pretty neat. You get an astronaut. That's a pretty neat sling bag. I tell you what, I've been using that sling bag from the cruise, and it's been very convenient. 20 bucks, that's not bad at all. And I got one in four screen too. Yeah, it's pretty neat. You could get a Snoopy shirt for the 50 year anniversary of the moon landing. Astronaut Snoopy. Oh, astronaut Snoopy. $30. And $22. And a Snoopy I need my space shirt. For $22. Greetings from Mars. And quite possibly my favorite section, the polos. Under Armour for $70. Ooh, I like this one a lot. The Antigua. Priced? Oh no, there's no price. That's always concerning. That one's cool. I keep seeing this every time I come here. It's like the navy blue. That's that polyester. I like it a lot. And it's priced at... Oh no. Oh, it's another one of those mystery ones. Oh, that worries me. I found out it's $50 for the Antigua. Okay, that's not too bad. Ooh, I like this one. I like that yellow stripe. $55, and then they have the non-striped one over here. It's a smaller, well, it's, I guess it's the same size logo. I think it's priced the same. Yeah, uh, $45. So $10 difference for that yellow stripe. I'm gonna have to get, I'm walking home with one of these today. So I got a freeze-dried ice cream sandwich. So I can feel what it's like to be an astronaut. Back up. Anyway, all right, let's try this out. All right, it's freeze-dried, so we're gonna try this out for science. It tastes just like I remember it from when I was in school. <laughs> it's not bad. It really isn't that bad. It's actually pretty good. I just bit into the strawberry part. So I still have chocolate and vanilla. Mm. So apparently I'm such a big spender that I got a free cinch bag. But I ended up buying a mouse pad 
So this video that you're going to be seeing is going to be edited using this mouse pad. It says Rocket Science. And then I got that shirt. I got that shirt that I was looking at. And then I ended up walking out with that polo I said I was going to walk out with. So a day well spent at Kennedy Space Center. Now I got to get out of here before this rain shows up. So, spoiler alert, I did not make it out of here in time. It is now raining, and there is thunder. So I guess we'll end it here. So I see you next time. See you real soon.